Welcome to this presentation on addressing key selection criteria. My name is Jason Brown. At the end of this online workshop, you will gain an understanding on what key selection criteria are and how employers use them. I will break down the criteria so that you will be able to identify the qualifier, competency and behaviour elements of a key selection criteria statement. This is essential in being able to work out what the employer is seeking. I'll also introduce a technique called the STAR method, which will enable you to structure an appropriate response to a selection criteria statement. We will also explore the range of ways that employers ask candidates to address the criteria. Starting off with the definition, case selection criteria describe the personal qualities, skills, abilities, knowledge and qualifications a person needs to perform the role effectively. These statements enable an employer to judge all candidate, candidates against, which makes the recruitment process fair for all who apply. Employers use case selection criteria throughout the recruitment process. They are used for, to shortlist candidates, an essential requirement as an employer may receive many hundreds of applications, and it is only every pos ever possible to interview a few people. They are used as a way to assess your capabilities and skills, as well as a comparison against other applicants. Your responses may also be used during referee checks. So if you have claimed to have developed a new product that generated a million dollars in income, the employer can ask your referee if that was actually the case. In assessing your responses to key selection uh, criteria, an employer will generally rate your response on a scale, perhaps from zero to five. They will rate your response to each criteria, then add these up to produce a total score. If the employer wishes to interview five people, then those rated in the top five will be the ones invited to an interview. Understanding this process is important as it demonstrates to you that you do need to respond to all criteria. Even if you feel you cannot adequately meet the requirements for all of them, responding means you will, um, not responding means you will, you will score zero for that criterion. So make sure you do write a response to every single criteria. In some situations, an employer may not require a written response to all of the criteria. They may, may use other methods to assess your competence, such as your response to questions at an interview, your performance on a range of activities in an assessment centre, your response to qu uh, questions on an application form, or even a sample of your writing, which might be your cover letter. So let's now look uh, at the select, how a selection criteria is written. Essentially, there are three components of a criterion statement. The first is a competency which is the skill, ability or attribute being assessed. Examples of competencies include teamwork, communication, analytical, negotiation or technical skills like being able to use Microsoft Excel. Next is the qualifier. This refers to how well you can perform the competency. Usually the qualifier will be a word such as excellent, advanced, strong, demonstrated or high level. The final component is the behaviour. This puts into context where and how the skill is to be used. The behaviours you exhibit when communicating with clients will be slightly different to when you're communicating with colleagues. So when thinking about how to respond to a selection criteria, start by analysing the statement to identify the skills and attributes being rated. You should think of the scenarios from work, study, volunteering, sports and other activities that could be used to illustrate your skill. Think about the behaviours that the employer has described and make connections to your own behaviours in a specific context. Here are three example statements. On the first example, demonstrated is the qualifier. Organisational skills is a competency. And ability to work with competing de deadlines is the behaviour. So in responding to this criterion, you will, would attempt to highlight a situation you were in where you had to complete a number of tasks at the same time, or perhaps where you were work, working towards a tight deadline and you were asked to cover for someone who called in sick at the last minute. Take a few seconds to have a look uh, at the other two example statements on screen.
When you are thinking of examples that demonstrate your competence, it is always best to use examples from paid employment. If you cannot think of a work-related example, then it is acceptable to use examples from study, sports, volunteering, or extracurricular activities. A trap that many people fall into is downplaying their own involvement in group projects or tasks. It can feel uncomfortable talking about yourself, but this is exactly what the employer wants you to do. If you are giving an example from a group project or task, they don't want to know what the whole team did, they want to know what you did. So use I instead of we when describing the situation or task. Part of this is also being aware of your role within a team, whether that be as a leader or someone who builds relationships, or perhaps as the person that did all the work. Also, variety is important. Don't just give examples from your current or your most recent job. Include examples from other jobs or activities you have been involved in. This shows that your competencies are transferable between one situation to another. So you've thought about how you are going to respond to um, each of the selection criteria. One of the questions a lot of people ask is then, well, how should I format uh, my responses? The traditional way is to create uh, a separate document with a title like responses to key selection criteria. And then you would write the criterion as a heading and then your response below that. Generally, an appropriate length of response is between one third and one half of one page per criterion. Sometimes an employer may specify a word limit, so please stick to that limit as responses exceeding the limit will not be appreciated as it shows either you did not read the instructions, uh, are unable to write concisely or worse, ignored the advice. In a few slides, we'll go through how to construct your response. Over the past couple of years, some employers have started requesting candidates respond in a slightly different way. In some cases, they may specify a maximum page limit, for example, two pages. Sometimes they may suggest responding to the key selection criteria in the cover letter, but allowing a, a longer um, length from the, the usual one page. In situations like this, pay attention to the instructions from the employer. Keep your responses brief, so just a few sentences per each part of the STAR method, uh, and we'll explain the STAR method in a few slides. Another method is um, that you may be asked to respond to one or two criteria as part of an application form. Usually you respond, um, your response should be kept to between 100 and 200 words. It is a good idea to write your response in a Word document, then once you are happy with your response, copy and paste it into the application form. Alternative assessments are now being introduced by some employers. So instead of you writing your responses to each criterion, the employer will assess your competence in other ways. This may include observation of you during an assessment centre, such as how you interact with other people or your communication skills through delivering a short presentation. They might use behavioural interview questions during phone or video screening interviews, or they might assess your written communication and attention to detail skills by looking at your application documentation. Usually these alternative assessments will be used in conjunction with other processes like an application form. Now we'll run through the STAR method, which is a great but simple framework for constructing your response to key selection criteria. And it's also used for responding to behavioural questions at an interview. Essentially, you are writing a story about an event that you are involved in, which demonstrates a competency that the employer is assessing. Like all good storytelling, you need to provide your audience with some background information. So describe the situation and the, and the task that you had to complete. Then describe the actions that you took to complete the task or address the problem. Then tell your audience what the result was. Did it work? If it didn't work, what did you learn from that experience? I'll now work through an example. In this example, the selection criterion is um, interested in you having highly developed organisational skills. We have written a response to this criterion broken down into the components of the STAR method. In a real application, you would just write this without referencing STAR. So the example is, I have developed excellent organisational skills through my part-time job as an event assistant at XYZ Events. In this role, I book staff to set up marquees at private functions. To perform this job, I need to identify all jobs booked for that day 
calculate how many staff are needed to set up each event and ensure that there is sufficient time to set up each event by the time required. Last month, I discovered that one of the sales staff had booked an event, but forgot to enter it into the booking system. As I had already created the schedule for the event staff to follow, it was too late to make changes. I had to make other arrangements so that the customer was not inconvenienced. So you can see here that the action was about making alternative arrangements. For the actions, the response says, I quickly made some phone calls to other event staff not rostered on for the day and found two people who were able to come to work immediately. I then arranged for a spare truck to be loaded with the marquees so that when the event staff arrived, they were able to deliver the marquee to the customer immediately. The result was that the marquee was set up in time, thus avoiding a major disruption to the event. My supervisor was very impressed with the work that I did to resolve the issue and gave me some movie tickets as a small reward. So you can see from this example, the STAR method helps to write a, a coherent and concise story that makes it easy for the employee to understand how well and in what circumstance you demonstrate um, competence in, in that particular skill. On screen, you can see how this example would be written up in a Word document. Note that it's not set out in, in the four paragraphs as, as I had on the previous slides, but organised in a way that makes sense uh, according to what you were saying. You can do things like using phrases such as this, the result was or the actions I took to resolve the problem were to flag to the employer the information you were about to tell them. To finish up this presentation, we will summarise the main things that impress employers. Reading through hundreds of responses to key selection criteria is tedious work, so being able to read responses that clearly and quickly demonstrate how you meet the criteria will be appreciated by the employer and is more likely to influence their perception of you. Your responses should use formal language appropriate for a professional workplace setting. Your responses need to be concise. Use examples from a wide range of situations and address all of the criteria. If you genuinely do not have an experience that can be used, an alternative would be to write down how you think you would respond if you face that particular scenario. If you want to know more about this topic, the book Resumes That Get Shortlisted has a chapter on addressing um, selection criteria. The book is available through the library in hard copy and also electronically. Thank you. You can get further assistance from one of our careers consultants via the web, social media or email. Our physical locations on campus are available from the website at latrobe.edu.au slash students slash careers.